one of the features I want to talk about today is the parallel, or sorry, is the USB ports on the back of the Flex Radio. What are they for? Uh, if you haven't dug into that, uh, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised at some of the things that you can do with the USB ports. And we use those ports to control some external devices, meaning maybe your amplifier or some special relays uh, or a bunch of different things. And um, you can have some fun with it. Uh, you can help automate your station. They're not really complicated. And uh, we'll, without any further ado, we'll go into the first, um, the first type that we deal with that plug into the back of all the 6000 series radios. And I'll show you how to configure these uh, in a minute. But first, let's look at the hardware. So we hit the share screen button. We add this. This is the USB to serial adapter. Now, serial has a bunch of different terms. We call it serial. We call it RS-232. We call it um, uh, cat data. It's all the same. And um, this is the connector that plugs into the back of the radio. Now, a little history on, on RS-232. Don't let it scare you. But it's been around for about half a century, if not longer. And there's other sort of versions of it called uh, RS-422, RS-45. They're all sort of the same, but um, if you already know what RS-485 is and RS-422, then this will be all uh, old school to you. So um, hi guys, thanks for joining. And I'm just gonna pop up the questions as I see them. So RS-232 is a uh, method of communicating data from one machine to another. In our cases, the machine is the radio and the other machine, maybe a computer, could be an amplifier, could be mm, a lot of different things. And uh, what we do with that is out of the radio, we send the frequency we're on, um, maybe the mode we're in, and not much else. Uh, but it's all very key information. So that if I go to 80 meters and I want my amplifier to know I'm on 80 meters, generally we send that information by RS-232. Now, some other amps use uh, different methods like uh, something called BCD, which is binary coded decimal. ICOM has their CIV format which is proprietary to them. And um, unfortunately, there's not many protocol converters that allow you to send a data from one type of machine to another. Uh, there are ways around that, but simply put, they generally stick with themselves. We use um, Kenwood format, Kenwood CAT data. It's been around since the 90s. It's pretty stable. Uh, all the radios, pretty much everything honors Kenwood format. And again, it makes it easy to send as serial or RS-232 data. Uh, now, pause there, remember that. Now we have another method, we actually send parallel data. And uh, that's a special cable here um, that sends, that has up to eight levels. Um, we, we call them um, LTTL levels that go up and down as requires. So that gives us a bunch more choices, uh, some amplifiers and things, or if you're doing, um, uh, if you've got a multi-band um, bandpass filter, it will, it can work with these levels. So keep that in mind. And, uh, so how do I find out about, uh, what, to, you know, what these do and how they do it? We've got these, um, if you go to, um, Google, this is just the fastest way for me to tell you, if you, if you type in flex radio, USB devices, we, we come up with this, it's the first hit, this document called, uh, the USB cable interface guide. And uh, you can click on it and eventually you get to something that looks like this. Uh, now, uh, this was updated a bit recently. There's probably a lot more stuff we can put into it, but there are some examples of how do we use the USB cable interface. And like any document, you can page down. Uh, we have RS-232 cables, which I talked about. And by the way, if you're using any of these devices, a step or a cat, um, sorry, a KPA 500, a KPA 1500, ACOM stuff, SBE amplifiers, Palstar, Bandmasters, Transverters, a whole bunch of um, stuff we've already put in here, but it's not limited to just those. You have a lot of other things that you can connect. And then we emulate something called, as I said, RS-232, BCD, and a third one called uh, bit cables. There's actually four, but we're only gonna talk about three. Uh, and bit means, and I can show you an example. Uh, I have a little lab set up so you can see what a bit cable does. Hey, Dave and Barr and Phil and Lee and a couple of other people. And somebody called Facebook user, but that's uh, Whiskey 8 Alpha CR Alpha. So thanks for taking the time to join. So um, I showed you the uh, RS-232 one, so that's sort of obvious. And um, 
there's three wires involved out of here, even though there's nine pins. There's ground, so there's only two wires left. There's the ability to send data, we call that transmit data, and the other one called receive data. And transmit TX connects to RXs because you're going to send data into the receive. And so that's how that works. Opposites attract. And generally, they're dealing with pins two and three. Uh, you, either, you either swap them or you don't. And if you're trying to guess how this works, um, you can actually make your own cables. And if you're not sure if one goes on two and one goes on three, if you get it wrong, don't worry about it. It just won't work. If you flip, flip them the other way, uh, it will work. If you want all everything plug and play as a great example, if I want this cable to connect to my KPA 500, I'm going to, uh, I'll need a, a gender bender, which changes the sex of the cable, and a null modem adapter, which swaps pin two and three. That's the end of that story. Uh, I don't want to go in depth about it. Lots of people can help you with that. Hey, Virgil. So that's what the that's what this does. Again, a lot of devices, like we went over to the cable, we would use it for the stepper, a KPA 500, a KPA 1500, uh, ACOM series, SVE, PAL stars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I can't remember if the bandmaster is parallel or serial. So I have if we um, there's some great notes on the on the community, um, and we have this device here called the um, uh, Denkovi uh, USB to parallel device, and that actually just take a cable. I hate it, the uh, flowing stuff, but you plug this right into the back of the radio, and you put some power on the top pins, and that's actually where I'm going to spend a lot of time in my um, discussion today. There's also another one by uh, Sane Smart. You can get this on Amazon. Look at that, they're $36. And what this gives you is eight relays that will do something special when you do something special with the radio. They're on off switches. And uh, they're great um, for transverter switching or special relay switching. And, and you, can, you can come up with your own ideas. So it really helps with your station automation. So um, on the Flex community, uh, Kilo Mike Zero Tango did this uh, story about oh, a year and a half ago on some of the things he does with his USB 8-channel relay board. And, uh, you know, I bet you we all have a pile of cables like that. And, um, um, you know, he's calling his back room a mess. I think it's a work of art. But we see he's got the radio here and he's got his transverter here and his amplifier here. And, he, and another transverter, an amplifier. And so he, he obviously this is not beside his operating position. It's probably even in another room. But the, if he switches bands, magic things happen. So you can go read about that. And there's his schematic. Uh, that's actually the board I'm going to demo. He's put some nice labels on it and how um, uh, different things happen. And let's see, we talked about that. And uh, I got one more thing to show you, but we'll save that. So. Uh, how do we how do we do this? So we'll close all this, and we got Smart SDR running here, and I'll close that. And I'm going to do it from Smart SDR. You can also do this from a Maestro or an M model, but um, it's a little easier in Smart SDR. Look at that. See my mic level not in transmits working. Isn't that cool? So we go into settings and we go to USB cables, and here on this menu you can see that I've got uh, two are grayed out and two are not. The first two that are grayed out are, are um, two that I've used before. Um, they're physically different cables. But we've got this one here called uh, just new cat cable. And if I double click on it, it'll open up this window. And that is an RS-232 cable. Now we sell them, um, as I may have showed you in the store. Uh, if you're stuck and you're in some other part of the world, you can get them um, online. They have to be the FTDI chipset. Uh, prolific or counterfeit units will not work. And if I was going to control, oh, I don't know, say my amplifier, I can just type in amplifier here. Doesn't really matter what you say, or you can say nothing. Uh, the serial number, this is the actual number of the cable. It's going to be a CAT cable, which is what I have them, uh, you know, for computer um, I'm, I'm aided transceiver. I'll get to look that up. And it's going to follow my transmit slice. And what that means is every time my transmit slice changes frequency, 
uh, it's going to send that data out to this. And that's pretty much what you want for an amplifier. You want it to be on the right transmit frequency. You can have it follow the transmitter pan adapter, the TX antenna that you're using. So say it was a TX antenna. Um, if you were using a 6600, your amplifier is probably hard connected to antenna one or, or antenna two. So you would select antenna one or antenna two. If you were using a transverter, you may select another port. That's And that's just super handy. Uh, so that every time I was to select something specific, it would send that data from uh, that. Uh, so that's sort of the rule or the trigger that we call it. The advanced part, if um, or this is actually critical, is the baud rate. Most of the other stuff you can leave the same. I leave flow control. It's sort of like a traffic cop to none. I don't want any flow control. But most of the stuff we, uh, 9600 is plenty fast enough but you can go up to you know some huge numbers that we move so the data is so slow there's so f little of it that even 4800 baud here is generally more than fast enough so that's for the RS232 cable so um and then you set it and forget it uh i can show you uh actually let's go back into the amplifier i'm going to show you the log i'm going to enable the log uh on that port and if we go over here and I change bands, um, just a second. Of course, that always fails when you show, but I think I have to have the other, um, I think I have to have it in passive, just a second. Uh, auto report enabled, that's right. This means it's always gonna send. So let's go back to the log. And let's go back to the log for here. And there we go. So now when I change bands, it, this is the data that actually gets sent out. This is really handy for debugging a problem uh, so that you know that the radio actually sent out the fact um, this is a Kenwood command. FA is a frequency for VFOA and uh, our uh, current um, uh, frequency in uh, Hertz. If I change, you'll see that, wow, there's look at all that data. As I change my frequency, it will keep sending data. That's really handy. Hey, hey, Andrew and uh, Manuel, welcome. So that's the easy one. Well, the other one's pretty easy too. Let's look at the relay board and let's open the log. It's it's actually the log for this is less exciting, but um, we now have a, re this is the card. Okay, like my high tech, um, I'll remove this so you can see it. Let's see, stop, uh, remove. So we have this, the same smart board here. And there's a bunch of LEDs in here. So the reason I have it here is so that you can see it as I change bands um, go up and down. So I'm going to do this again. And uh, uh, we'll, what do we have lit? We have nothing lit because I'm on a work band. So, but right now, if we go to, what happens here, if I go to uh, my receiving antenna on antenna one, and I go to 80 meters, um, the zero up here will light. Now it doesn't work so well on, on this. It's sometimes hard to see, but we'll go to band 80 meters and uh, you'll see we got the light on by the zero. So that relay went from off to on. So we can do something with that. And then we can go to 40 and it switched and yep, there was a different bit and 15 and those are all tied to um, uh, antenna one. But look what happens when we go to 10 meters. Band 10 um, the, there are no lights lit. Oh, yep, yeah, there is four. Oh yeah. Cause it's already on the right antenna because I was here earlier. But if I switch the antenna, see 10 meters, RX antenna is on antenna two. If I change that to antenna one, uh, it goes out. Yes. So, and we are on 10, 10, 10, 10. Um, Yes, you could actually. So you could actually say now, uh, so we're on 10 meters here and uh, push to talk on. And I think if I mox the radio, it will click on and off. No, there's a way to make that work. Band, oh, antenna two. We're RX antenna, antenna two. And uh, we mox the radio. And yes, you could turn off your receiving. Oops, antenna, we're transmitting. So um, that's a very good way to do it uh, as well. Very handy for that. Uh, and then if you're the you know a transverter person, you've got some special stuff. 
uh, you can the, you can go crazy. So again, here are the choices. Same thing. Uh, do nothing, which you can't pick after you've picked it. You can the active slice, and just so you, in case you're not aware, an active slice is a slice with the yellow part in the radio. Uh, the transmit pan adapter. So that would be this. Well, let's go to the 10 meter one. So we're playing with that. Transmit TX pan adapter. And uh, um, it's obviously active. Uh, we can go to the transmit slice. Can I turn off transmit? There's no other slice for it to be pulled to. So, and that's how the parallel ones work. So what other cool thing could you do? I think in a geeky, okay, I got nothing special to do, but I want to, I just got to do it because it's fun. So let me um, bring this back up. So this is the board I was playing with. You can run over to Amazon and for 20 bucks or so, and this is the Canadian price, you could put a big on the air light on and say every time the foot's down, the light lights up if you got a little creative. And um, so, uh, uh, da, 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 da. so who wanted to know, um, you know what? You can order those uh, same smart boards um, or I believe I got mine off Amazon, but if you Google Sane Smart, uh, is the one I'm using, uh, or you can order the then Covey board, um, from, uh, overseas, apparently it comes really quickly. Uh, they're not expensive, 2650, um, us, am I looking in us dollars, uh, type of thing. So that's where you get it. Uh, um, and I'm sure there's others here that are using the, these parallel boards with wonderful success and have picked them up. I honestly think I got this one off Amazon here in Canada. So, um, so that's it. So I, uh, that's a quick overview of the, uh, of the, what the parallel ports or the USB ports do in the back. Uh, and, uh, they're a blast. You can have so much fun with them. Um, and by the way, you're not limited to just one. If you need eight of these to do something, you can install eight of them. Uh, just put a powered hub, uh, like a regular computer on the back of the radio. There's not a lot of power available on the USB port in the back of the radio, so don't get sloppy. Add a, a good powered uh, hub. You know, it'll come with a two or three amp power supply, an eight port one, and then you can plug everything in there. And they just show up in the chooser and uh, to do what you want. Um, my friend, one of my friends who's a big microwave guy, has got three of them, and he's changing antennas on the tower and, and the whole thing. Cool. So, isn't that handy? So I hope you guys like that. Uh, that's the um, the USB serial devices and USB parallel devices available. Work on your Flex Radio. You guys have a great day. Glad to help. And if you have any questions, you can always email me at, uh, at uh, info at flexradio.com. It's better to use the alias because a couple people get it in case uh, I'm, you know, I don't know, in case I'm not around. And we'll do the best to help you out. And there's also the community. Lots of ideas on the community. So we've had this for a while. Can't do this in any other radio. Isn't that cool? Guys, take care. Have a great day. 73.